Hello everyone, this is Dave from Moonride, and today we're going to channel Eleanor Roosevelt. I'm channeling Eleanor Roosevelt for a couple reasons. One reason, um, one question that I'm going to have for her, if you will, is just what should we do right now? I'm thinking specifically of the Kavanaugh hearings. Um, what should we do? Uh, maybe even what can we expect? The other is just general advice. You know, Eleanor Roosevelt, what would you what would you advise us um, to do right now? And that is all Americans. Uh, I picked uh, Eleanor specifically because I'm looking for American women who will um, give us advice right now. I've, I've channeled a couple of men. Um, now I've channeled a couple of women. And I've had a great deal of response from viewers about women they'd like me to channel. And I'm going to be working through this in the next few weeks to try and see how much of those um, ladies I can channel for you. Let's see what Eleanor Roosevelt has to say. Hmm. It's pretty cool because I can see um, the White House and I can see like what an engaging woman she was and like how much fun she had in the White House. Just like really just being a very good person, engaging with all those people. It's a very egalitarian feeling that I have from this woman. Um, every single person that worked in the kitchen with her, you know, every single person in that White House, she considered her equal. So, um, Eleanor, what would you advise us about this upcoming, um, the upcoming um, Kavanaugh hearings, specifically regarding his um, potential attempted rape? I keep seeing Anita Hill, and uh, one thing that um, she's advising is, look, you guys, look at look at Anita Hill. Look um, how she was treated. Look what look at that as a model. First of all, the things that they did wrong, and second of all, as the things that they did, um, you know, somewhat correctly. Um, at least she was given some space and time for her hearings, um, and other people also um, were able to speak for her. We're not getting that in this one, are we? Um, it's getting very, very rushed. So the killer is going to be time. The more time that it takes for them, the more they, that we delve into Kavanaugh's exploits, the more we find out about him, she's telling me the more it's going to be a done deal. He will not make it. Um, let's just ask her directly, will Kavanaugh make She's shaking her head. She's like, nope, he's not going to make it. Um, is he going to get confirmed but then kicked out or anything? What do you think, Eleanor? She's like, no way. So no confirmation. No, she's like, nope, nope, nope. Is there anything else that we're going to expect to see in these things? She's nodding. Yep. What can we expect to see? Like, what is it that, that we're, you know, what's the, what can you tell us what dark stuff there is back there? She's just like, wow, it's like this. She's like, there's a lot of dark stuff out there that he's done. It's like a, I don't know what you call them, but they're like, a, is it a xylophone? Is this, that what this is? It's not, or is it some kind of organ? It's like opening that up like this. It's just like multiple, multiple, multiple um, files on him will tell you he's not a good guy. Can you give us what an example is? Consumer stuff, you know, home safety. She's just like, you know... If he's in charge, if he gets to make these decisions, you know, people will die. They'll die in fires from homes that don't have to follow these regulations because a corporate a corporation doesn't have to do that. You know, that's the kind of thing that you're going to find back there. Um, can you tell me what else? Anything specific he's going to do. She's just telling me he's a sneaky guy. He comes off with this, you know, pasty, white, all-American kid. He's a sneaky little guy. He's, you know, the kind of guy at school who um, would set you up so it looks like you're cheating, but he's the one that's cheating with no compunction, no, no problem doing that as long as he wins. He's somebody who shouldn't be like that, but is. That is, his background was... Not like that. That's not how he was raised by his parents. But he is sneaky. He'll do anything for power. He doesn't care who he harms. And that's going to come through if you look through all of his stuff. It's going to come through that he, he really doesn't care about others. He's a machine. 
a machine, um, an ego machine, if you will. I think there may be some other infidelity stuff that comes up because um, he's looking askance at his wife and children and he's thinking they don't want to see this. Um, I don't want them to know what I'm really like. Okay, and now a lady is showing up. Who are you? Hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, it's just funny. Is this lady is kind of trashy? You know, she's like chomping on her gum and she's like pulling the gum out of her mouth and she's just like, I know all about him. I know all about him. Who are you? I wonder if he doesn't have some online relationship with someone, maybe. That's what she's showing me. Uh-huh. Now, she's the kind of person who's no dope. She's like, oh, I'm going to make money out of this. Uh, I'm going to give him a call and let him know how much he owes me. And, we'll, and let him know that I'm very aware of this confirmation and... Have you talked to him already? She's like, yep, I gave him a call. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm ready to um I'm ready to play. She's asking him for money. Oh. Oh. You know how Kavanaugh's always broke? If you look at his background, he's broke. And there's no reason why a person who makes two hundred thousand dollars a year as a judge should be that broke and in debt. There's a reason why he is broke and he is in debt. And one of the reasons is he spends a lot of money on these kinds of obsessions, like he's obsessed with baseball and he'll spend a fortune on it, but he's also obsessed in other ways. He's actually kind of a sexually obsessed guy. He's sexually repressed. I mean, the reason that he wants things like no abortion is because he functions strictly on that kind of... Um, you know, women are good and evil, like, I'm going to suppress the woman that makes me attracted to her because it's her fault that I'm attracted to her, right? Um, if, if everybody were just nice, I'd, I'd be pure as the driven snow, but because of her, I'm bad, you know? So he wants to do that. That's his motivation. And are you going to show yourself up? Okay, she's saying maybe, maybe. We'll see if he comes up with the cash. He's having some trouble coming up with the cash that I'm asking him for. And, you know, blackmail's illegal, so I'm not really ready to jump out of there. But I might. I might. Is it going to come out? So, um, Eleanor Spirit, is it going to come out with this woman? She's nodding. Like, the woman that's kind of trashy is nodding yes. Um, Eleanor, what do you think? Maybe. Um, spirit, what what about this? Is is she gonna? Is this woman gonna make herself known? Yes and no. It might be that she particularly does not make herself known, but um, the the story that's being given by the accuser, um, the lady who's accusing him, it corresponds to other stuff that we're gonna find out. So there's going to be things that make her appear very truthful and, and damage him that are going to come up. Hmm. It's somewhere in the notes. It's somewhere in his background. It's somewhere in the stuff that um, the papers that have been hidden from our eyes. Because I keep seeing um, Kavanaugh with a bag and he doesn't want us to look in there. All right? Okay. And you think of a bag as like, you know, baggage. Right, he's got some baggage there he doesn't want us to know about, and um, he's keeping suppressed. Um, let's ask again, what about um, Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing? No way, I'm getting a no way from a bunch of people. How long is it going to take? Two weeks, um, it'll take a couple of weeks, then he's going to be done. By the end of those two weeks, it's going to be done. Is Kavanaugh going to pull out? He's not going to pull out. He's going to keep going with it. But that is to his peril. Yeah, it's really important that we don't get this guy in there. If he got in there, he would take his revenge. Not just on the woman that's blackmailing him, but all women. Right? He would make sure all women become, you know, 
mealy mouthed little wives. He's a very angry man. This is a very angry man. Don't be fooled by the way that he looks. He's a very unpleasant person. And he dislikes women actively. Girls he's okay with because they're easy. Um, they don't challenge him, but he doesn't like women. His wife is starting to disbelieve him too. She's starting to think maybe it's true. Because she heard something when he was younger. She heard something. She heard him talk about certain things. She's starting to think it might be true. Um, that is affecting his relationship with her. She's not pleased. His wife is not pleased. She's quite angry, too, that she's being made a fool of. Okay, let's go back to Eleanor Roosevelt. Is there anything else you need to tell us about this hearing? It won't go through. It, he will not succeed. Hmm. Yeah, something's going to come up for him. Something new that um, we don't necessarily know yet. It's, it's all in the notes. It's all in those um, suppressed notes. So, Eleanor, what advice would you give American people right now? She said the law. The law is the law. Um, review the law. Um, stand by the law. Use the law for your, um, for your own, um, you know, justice. You know, it all comes down to the law. We keep getting, um, you know, the law keeps saving us again and again. The law has shown the truth. Um, the law has shown, for example, that some people who are accused are not guilty. The law has also shown that those who are appearing innocent in the beginning do turn out to be quite guilty. It's the law. Um, this is a fair system that we've created. Um, it should work for everyone, Republican, Democrat, Independent. It should absolutely work for everyone in the same way. And that is what we have to keep insisting on, is that we must return to these norms where people are treated the same way at the same time always. And um, this is not how it's working. It's just becoming a system where one party has power, then another party has power. You notice that they still haven't be, been able to overturn the law. And we need to return to rationality. You know, the media has driven us all nuts with their accusations and their raving and people's um, kind of creating personalities. This is a dictatorship where people just run around and throw their personality out there and whoever's got the best personality is the winner this week or something like that. Or, you know, we got to get beyond that whole stuff and, you know, let's forget about the personalities and go down to the basics of, you know, what is our government supposed to do? I mean... You know, let's suppose candidate A is not the best person. Is he doing a great job for our country? That's why we're here. We're not here to elect a, a best friend. We're here to elect somebody that's an effective leader. Obviously, somebody that's horrible personally wouldn't be appropriate. But um, can we just get beyond and go back to assuming that people are basically good people until proven otherwise and, um, you know, objectively looking at what what we have. Um, she's like, there's a great um, power in community. And when these communities, uh, different communities come together to create one body, they're much more powerful than um, the evil factors that would oppose that community. So um, the more we can get back to communities of people who are working together and who are rational and who are, um, you know, giving up their time because they believe in something uh, higher than them um, politically, the better. Mm. She's also going like, hey man, you know, don't worry too much about this stuff. Don't worry. It will change in time. We'll much we'll get much, much better. So many people out there doing um really great things and um there are new things. Uh, there are things that weren't being done before Trump was the president. So keep looking at that. Keep noticing how people are really motivated. You know, when you put a, a, a danger within them, that's how they come together and that's how they become um, truly American. It's those actions, those becomings 
That is what is America, this becoming a better person, this becoming a part of a, of a group, this leadership, this listening, listening to even people you don't necessarily agree with about everything, that's fine. You know, you need to, you know, have a, just a sense of love for the people in your community. It's all, all about that, you know. Uh, you know, I spent my life, you know, trying to find ways to help people make it in a time period when it was really difficult to make it. And that's what we got to do now is just to, you know, sort of do our best when we're talking to somebody that, you know, we don't agree with, but we can agree on something with, you know, how can we get together with that person and, and affect a change? How can we speak truthfully? How can we speak with, um, you know, with candor? And at the same time, without being cruel, let's stop making the personal arguments and start arguing for the higher forms of human nature. Like, let's try to go into an argument appealing at the person's highest self. Instead of getting angry, um, let's try to appeal to one another in this a sort of way where we show each other a certain amount of respect just for being human and then try to go, well, look, yeah, this is the higher road. Let's go to the higher road and, and um, let's, let's speak in this way that shows that we um, care about others. A little bit of humor doesn't hurt, uh, but just basically looking at someone and treating them like a good person, even if you don't agree with them, treating them about, like, like you would treat a friend, treating them you know, decently, that is more important than um, just some political action. People are coming together. Notice, people are coming together. It's not all bad. Good things are coming out of this. Really good things are going to come out of all of these coalitions that are being built. So just keep going in this way. America is a great country, and it will always be a great country as long as we continue to, you know, act in a fairly good manner. You know, as long as we continue to care about the people in our community and um, have honest debates. And that's what's missing: is we're no longer having an honest debate. If you're on, arguing with someone and they're not being honest with you, don't bother. Move on to someone who is going to be honest and is going to be on your team. There are some people who will not join you. They will never, ever join you, and that's that. That is their problem. That is to their detriment. Ultimately, they are isolating themselves, whereas if you're going out and you're making this sort of circle where you talk to different groups about different things, have different points of view, listen to them, listen to where they're coming from, try to understand why they believe what they believe, then um, you'll be better off. But there's, there's no point in beating yourself up against someone who's not going to hear you. So, um, you know, be open-minded, but with the right person. Dismiss the rest of the business. That's just going to drive you crazy. And you'll spend your time arguing with somebody who's going to change your mind instead of building a coalition with someone who who is going to change, whose mind is going to be changed. Um, remember that, um, you know, I grew up with an alcoholic father and I loved him so much and it was a terrible child and it was really difficult and you know he eventually died but and I waited for him on those stairs I waited and I waited every night for him to come home and he didn't and um, it was heartbreaking it was a heartbreaking experience as a child um, you know I was ugly uh, my parents were not I was just this ugly duckling no one thought I would make anything of myself uh, my mother was ashamed of me. I had nothing going for me as a child. And I'm glad that I had that experience because it gave me a lot of empathy. I understand how others feel. You know, I understand. I understood during my lifetime, you know, how people are lonely and how people are, you know, um, you know, feel ashamed and all this stuff. And even though I was a wealthy woman, I knew very much, you know, what what people went through. And I didn't experience poverty, but I had an empathy for it because... I had a sort of spiritual poverty in my childhood. In the way this was good, it brought me to help others. And in that same way, you can transform anything that's happened to you, anything bad that's happened to you, in something good, into something good. And remember, as you're doing that, you're doing it. You're doing it. You are the powerful person that is recreating your life. Just as I was this powerful woman that pretty much, you know, largely alone you know, helped save a country, you know, help save people from, you know, lifetimes of, you know, horrific poverty. Um, I gave people hope. That's more than 
more than enough to carry us through. Look, America's going to go on. We're going to be a, a fabulous country in the future. We are going to come together in these ways. America's just, things are more exposed on the surface. This is going on everywhere, but America, it's just more exposed because we have more freedom and we're in a very intense people. But that ultimately is going to bring us to a new intention, a new direction, a new sort of country where uh, we are much more community oriented. That's the goal. And um, that's why this is happening. Just to remind us how important our communities are. Right. So she says, look, don't worry. Don't worry. Really, it will be better. Obviously, I don't want you to do nothing. Do the things that you need to do, uh, even on a one on one basis. And understand that you're creating yourself right now. You're creating America right now. And it's going to work out fine. Right? On that note, thanks for watching.